Hi guys, my name is Seb Tudor, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain and welcome back. Now today I want to talk about artificial intelligence. It's something that, that has been, uh, that I've kind of been looking for a reason to talk about for a while because it's such an interesting topic to me. Um, but one of the things that has come up more recently and that I've seen recited a few times over the last kind of week or so have been um, people complaining or bringing up this, this thing about um, AI assistance or virtual intelligence assistance, I suppose, um, like Siri or Cortana or Alexa or all of those being uh, having female voices and being um, reinforcing these terrible gender stereotypes that are, are, you know, females are subservient and helpful and they look after things and that's all they're good for and and stuff like that. And it's it's. It, it, I mean, it shows a deep and significant lack of understanding in regards to the people that are actually coming up with these complaints. Um, but also, there's that element of um, kind of complaining about something for the sake of complaining about it, and that's it. Because the thing is, there are ways, no, uh, not across every single device, but for instance, the um, in regards to, to Alexa... There have been people who have questioned whether or not there will be a male voice coming for Alexa at some point in the future, and they've said, not at the moment, but probably in a future update. We're going to get there eventually, you know. Um, same with uh, various other bits and pieces. The the you know either you can you can find various places online that will mod it in for you or change the the files around. Um, or you've you've got those, for example, like Microsoft's Cortana, where the idea was that she was based off the AI companion from a, a video game franchise that was their big marketing gimmick. Have that kind of helper in your system helping you too. You know, yes, was it a way to compete? Of course it was, but it was also just a marketing gimmick. It wouldn't have mattered... You know, they could have picked any fucking character and and spun it that way, and it probably would have worked out the same way. But the thing is, the the more substantial issue the, that I have with this, which is why I wanted to talk about it, was because it's, it's the assumption of these people that men and women, again, are completely the same. That men men's voices and women's voices affect us in the same way and work the same way and so it doesn't matter which one it is which way or the other you know and and you know why why in that case though also again why shouldn't it be women you know it means that the voice actresses and the people that are, are working on the voices who are providing the voices for these systems are getting jobs isn't that a good thing but that beside that that, that put to one side um it's it's the mechanics of it that I find really fascinating because it's it's again this is, these are the building blocks for how we will actually get to proper AI and the way that we can converse with them and interact with them. So why are they female? Well, there are numerous different ways in which the the female voice differs from a male voice. So for instance, there was a a study done at the University of Sheffield which um, very specifically looked at the effects of, of male and female voices on the brain. And they didn't find, from, uh, from what I've seen, from what I can find online from various sources, um, there didn't seem to be much information that they found uh, making substantial uh, differences and, and processing changes and whatever else bit for, from female brains hearing female voices. But in male brains, there seemed to be this very distinct separation between the places that process the different voices. So when, a, hear, when a, a guy is hearing a female voice, it's a much more complex sound. It has much more in the way of, um, of um, its own kind of melody to it. And, and it, it tends to be, um, how is it described? Yeah, greater natural melody due to differences in pitch and, and tone and volume and things like that um, during conversation. And so as a result, it gets processed in the same part of the man, of a man's brain that picks up music. Yeah, it, it's, it's the part of the brain that, that really works into complex sound. And so as a result, his, lots of people picked up the, the study, uh, Dr. Michael Hunter's study, 
um, to uh, kind of say, oh, well, men men have to work harder to hear women. And he goes, well, no, actually, with when it comes to a man hearing a man, it goes to the kind of mind's eye, kind of self-focused, analytic area of the brain that seems to try and build uh, information out of that voice to create a picture, to visualise, um, be it to either probably visualise what is being discussed in the way that, that it's being discussed between them, or to visualise the person that is actually saying what's being said. Whilst when it comes to the, the uh, female voice being heard, it's going into that much more complex um, area of the brain that is working on difficult sounds, on, on like complex sounds made of multiple different elements that then can hold much more information. So his suggestion is that actually the you know the women uh, and their voices are able to convey much much more information in a smaller period of time but again potentially this is this isn't the way that, that men are going to to uh, best listen all the time but when you have information that needs to be passed on it's very effective especially when it comes to um the the kind of pickup times for this where there was a study done at the University of Florida where they had people listening to male and female voices and having to identify the the uh, gender of the person speaking and so on and so forth and in those recognition tests they were finding the the for the most part women responded faster to both men and women but men responded ever so slightly faster to women than they did other men and granted we're talking about like millisecond differences here maximum of like a couple of milliseconds each uh, each way but it's it's men are much more non-verbal you know we don't use as many words we don't we don't communicate in that kind of way and as a result when it comes to um, the means by which we communicate we're not as clear but we still convey meaning through um, other systems that we just pick up on yeah a, a guy guys can can sit there doing a thing and they can communicate by almost grunting at each other as is the stereotypical kind of comedic scene they will they will be able to communicate in short ways that convey enough to get the job done and as a result there's not a huge amount of exposition and throwing out of information there huge amounts of discussion around it it's effective it's to the point now, when it comes to being authoritative or creating vision, then a male voice tends to be used, yeah? Someone that's instructive. Why? Because listening to a male voice doing its male thing, not necessarily being having to, to give off a huge amount of information, but just be concise, just be to the point. This is why you've got an awful lot of default sat-navs with male voices, because they aren't trying to... Um, create a relationship with you they are purely trying to get you to go this way and so as a result when a lot of people are hearing uh, when they when they listen to to female um, voices though they're hearing a much much clearer kind of transmission of a lot more information so you know it's it's one of those those interesting things that just kind of comes down to the mechanics of how our brains work and how our bodies are uh, able to communicate that between us you know and so when it comes to um for instance listening at a railway station to different kinds of announcers most people say that female announcers are uh clearer and they they tend to to kind of pick up more from it rather than the male announcer why is this? Possibly due to the higher pitch. It's a, a higher energy um, tra kind of sonic transmission that's that's able to, that, you know, people are able to pick up more readily. That it travels that little bit further, punching through the the low rumbling around them in a train station, which a male voice might kind of meld into. Um, evolutionary um, kind of biology wise, we're looking at it as a as a like men aren't going to need to make a lot of noise to hunt. In fact, they are going to want to do quite the opposite. So if they are out there and they are communicating in short, sharp bursts of very low, kind of nondescript, out-of-the-way sound, 
then it's going to make more sense in their role. However, they are going to want to hear a, a female voice as a warning of danger, as a warning of threat to their tribe, to their people, to um, a general alarm. And also, you know, when they're coming back after they've they've hunted and it's, it's there on them again to be uh, more potent protectors of their territory, observations, information passed on by people who have been in that territory consistently, you know, having that passed on and having a lot more information transmitted in a shorter period of time very much more effectively, that's a good thing, right? And so as a result, though, going back to the whole AI thing with with all of this information that I've just thrown at you, the, the reasons why the um, these various virtual intelligent um, assistants are female comes down to kind of a couple of different things. Firstly, it's probably been just focus grouped. Yeah, they've sat down a whole load of people in the room, they've trialed a couple of different phrases, a couple of different things, a couple of inter different interactions with this device, and people have probably, due to the way that the female voice is processed, um, have, have veered towards preferring the female voice. That's just a a fairly straightforward thing you know if most people have said that that's what they like then that's what they're going to manufacture but then the other thing that stands out from it is that with these devices especially with the kind of smart home things um, or things like mobile devices where it's sat right here with you all the time and you want to be able to ask it questions talk to it just just communicate with it and through it you know it's all about connectivity communication, forming relationships, maintaining relationships. These are all things that, that women by default do better and more substantially and in a shorter period of time than men would. And so as a result, it, the, the way that we react to their voices when they actually start communicating with us has obviously made a substantial difference to our brain both mostly male but also female because you've got an awful lot of preference towards female voices it's been shown in fetuses before the the um uh, the fetus will respond very much more to the mother's voice but won't have any special reaction to either the father's voice or to other random general voices in the the environment that it can hear from outside it will respond very specifically to the mother's voice which again probably a very good survival mechanic so that when it responds directly to its mother's voice it's a, it's a you know a, a definitive way of making sure that that child survives you know a mother crying out to it that child is going to hear that mother over random other people that could be saying and doing anything and so it's going to go to be protected by etc but as a result with the the um the the virtual assistants these these ais um or proto ais i suppose they are all about this connectivity and especially when you're linking them to things like social media where it's not just connectivity with your your immediate environment through this device it's connectivity with the potentially the rest of your social sphere the rest of the world through this device then you know that's huge and so the way you're going to want to have that kind of of device communicating with you is surely through the means by which to to get the best results fastest which again is probably through the female voice because it's clearer because it, it, it's picked up by parts of the brain that are, are used for actual listening instead of just kind of making uh, a, an idea around what is being said, be it either a visualization of a goal, a visualization of the person that's speaking to you or whatever else. You know, you, you're going to want that rush of information in a short period of time so that every time you ask your device to do something, when it responds to you, you know what it has and hasn't done. And so when those people who have been complaining about this are coming out and going, but it's sexist because it's reinforcing gender stereotypes. No, it's using gen it's using se like sex-based biological mechanics, neurological mechanics, to make a product more effective. And as said, if you don't like it, let's say that you're you're a person who kind of the female voice just just rubs you up the wrong way. It just doesn't mesh well 
when you're you're sitting around you'd much prefer a a deeper male voice um, so that when you request it play whatever music or whatever else it responds to you in a way that that feels right to you in which case fine in a lot of these devices you can just change it you can change it to you can change um, some of these devices to to just swap accent to swap gender to have all kinds of weird distortions put on them depending on entirely what kind of voice packs are available for it you know you go all the way back to the first kind of dictaphone or, or, or conversive software stuff um, kind of the accessibility stuff for people who who were kind of nearly blind or whatever using a PC so the PC would read stuff to them and you had two voices you had like what was it Microsoft Anna and Microsoft Sam and you could just pick whichever one and you know that yeah these voices are far more complex because they're having to they're not just voice sounds that are then being strung together haphazardly to try and fit what's in front of you on an on a email or something they're supposed to be kind of much more freeform much more natural sounding so that you're bonding with the the device as you use it so that there's this this learning um, capacity there in theory as you move forward with it but again it's it's this this issue of people confusing like genuine sex and sexism and things like that which do exist in the world yeah there are places where they genuinely exist and they are absolutely horrific and there's there's all manner of different things that could be done or that may be done or that need to be discussed at the very least around those areas especially in parts of the world where due to religion or due to um, a long established social structure be it through a, a dictatorship or otherwise or whatever else you know women are being oppressed and squashed and prevented from from flourishing um, but having a female voice on an, on a piece of tech isn't one of those things you know this is a waste of, of time a waste of energy for those people who are process, like protesting this and complaining about it and whining about it but for for people like me that have maybe been looking for an excuse to talk about AI anyway but also have been um, kind of looking forward to this kind of easily conversive and and easily kind of communicated uh, with technology being more and more available you know this is a really interesting thing it's it's the application of what we can learn about ourselves to the systems that we're developing for a better world um but yeah anyway guys uh, that's that's kind of everything uh, that I, I wanted to talk about on this one today just because it, I, I again I saw that I saw a couple of articles and a couple of videos just popping up over the last few days like I'd heard people complain about this briefly in the past but apparently something I don't know what it is but just triggered over the last week um, a whole load of these other things popping up and I'm like I, I love finding studies about this kind of stuff it's stuff that works really well with the things that I, I enjoy talking about and enjoy working on you know the the number of people that I've I've talked to who are I don't know a female female team leader female manager who w tries communicating in the same way as her as as the male leaders on on the team that she's with and it doesn't work and the reason why is because there are these differences and she would be far better served finding her own way of doing it and and developing that to her own strengths rather than just copying same vice versa where a male individual has come onto a mostly female team in some kind of leadership role he's been given all of these hints and tips by by the other people other females on the team already who are are kind of trying to get him to to integrate a mesh and and manage effectively because obviously that's going to help their whole team but he finds it to be a real struggle because all of this stuff that they are saying and doing is a communication method that he's not particularly best built for um and so as a result you know taking these things on board where yeah if, if your wife's voice is music to your ears if if your girlfriend's voice is just the nicest thing that you could listen to um if you just generally prefer female fronted bands or whatever 
then yeah, there's a good chance that it's in part, at least, as a result of what's going on up here, not purely because of, of just random preferences and things. You know, so when it comes to to this kind of thing, again though, the other extreme, I was trying to close out the video, but I've got onto a different a slightly different tangent here. But the other extreme is the those those individuals who get lost in things like computer games, marry computer game characters and shit like that. Um you know, especially when it's a guy falling for a female character, there's a good chance that one of the reasons that he's he's susceptible to that, beyond other various issues like extreme loneliness or isolation or other kind of various difficulties in, in social areas or whatever else, one of the reasons why he may have been so attached directly to this thing is because it was a female voice addressing him directly, working with him, achieving a, a bonding experience and so, as and and his brain is interpreting in a way that he's pulling so much extra information out of small interactions rather than extensive ones, and so you know it it doesn't really surprise me that those kind of things kind of continue to happen as well. Anyway, I'm gonna actually stop rambling now because it was it was it was interesting with lots of information, and then I got onto the rambling, and then I got onto more rambling, so we'll stop. But I'd love to know what you guys think, you know, um, which work better for you. I know personally that for the most part, yeah, I prefer hearing um, female voices in a lot of the tech stuff. You know, I actually get a little bit, um, not annoyed or antsy, but it's it's like when uh, I've been in cars with male sat-nav voices and they just drone and the drone especially considering it's a kind of tinny sound from the the speakers you know that that just kind of gets on my nerves a little bit personally you know it, it, it just doesn't i would probably had should i feel the use the the use of having a sat nav be necessary um i'd probably swap the voice around to being female anyway um so or a celebrity comedy one because why not but you know, it's it's that's my personal preference. What are yours? Is? And then, on top of that, you know, the the whole sexism argument. You know, do you agree with what I'm saying? And actually, take a look at the information and go, well, yeah, actually, it makes sense. It's probably a bit bit of focus group stuff and a bit of kind of neurology applied to the the kind of software and the mechanics of of all of this stuff. Just just put together, and that's why you've got it this way. That's why everyone's doing it. It's not one group that are going off on this tangent where they're doing it it's it's kind of almost become a a convention for these pieces of software just because it, it's what's there that works it's the functioning moving parts being applied um or are you are you on the side of the people that have been complaining against it where you're going well yeah this may all be true but that doesn't mean that the you know it, it's continually developing these subservient female characters the reinforce the toxic stereotypes that personally I don't think are really as impactful as you you ever seem to suggest that they are especially not in situations where the actual thing that you're communicating with is a little black box on a desk but uh, anyway guys let me know what you guys think uh, it'll be interesting to see the conversation on this down in the comments if there is one and uh, otherwise, I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it entertaining, then please drop us a like, share this video, and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.